Well, thanks so much for joining us for this edition of The Ambassador. It is such a privilege to be before these cameras today and just to share the Word of God with you. I know that's the only thing that we have really to change uh, people's lives. We are thankful for the Word of God and the Spirit of God who illuminates our understanding to understand what the Word is telling us. Praise God for His Word. Thank the Lord. Uh, You know, I just want to share this with you as we begin today. Uh, We are beginning a training program that's very specialized for just a few individuals in the area of divine healing. Now, if you know very much about our ministry, you know that we emphasize this ministry a lot because it is a lot of our calling. And uh, we're looking for people that are really all in when it comes to the ministry of healing, the ministry of power and power evangelism and how to be more effective in ministering to the sick. And we're looking for people that we can work with and train on a specialized basis in this particular area. If you believe that that's you, let us know and just go to our website, ambassadorministries.org and uh, share your desire to be a part of this. We'll get back in touch with you and just find out if you're a good fit for this program. So praise the Lord. Just wanted to mention that to you at the outset today. We have a wonderful word for you and it will change your life uh, if you internalize it and you really begin to allow it to affect your thinking. So praise God for his word. As I said already, we want to get into it. Today's message is entitled, Our Partnership with Prosperity. Our Partnership with Prosperity. Or we could call it, Our Friendship with Finances. And it deals with how you relate to money and material goods, or how to associate yourself with finances. Praise God. By the way, prosperity, of course, is more than just money, but I'm going to relate this to money in particular, as I believe we can relate to the subject easiest if we think in financial terms. So that's what we're going to do, and we're going to get into the scripture. I know this is a subject that's a little bit touchy for a lot of people, but there's a reason we're talking about it. It's because the Bible has a lot to say about it, and because it's important to God, and it's important. It's an important component of your inheritance in Christ. So let me pray for you, and then we'll get into the Word. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for my partner, my friend, my brother, my sister. Lord, wherever they're listening, however they're listening, whenever they're listening, I thank you, Lord God that this word will go out and it will affect their lives in a positive way, that Christ will be unveiled in the lives of those that are listening, those that are under the sound of my voice, and those that their lives influence. We just want to thank you, Father God, that the word of God builds us up and it gives us an inheritance to all those who are sanctified And we just praise you, Lord God, that your word is like a fire. It's like a rock or like a hammer that breaks the rock to pieces. We just thank you, Lord God, that any stony ground in our heart, Father God, you are are just blowing that out so that, Father God, we can grow the good seed of the word of God. And we just want to thank you for all that you're doing. I pray particularly today for those that might be sick in body, for those that might be ill, for those that might be infirm, that they would receive from your word, Father God, something that would build up their spirit man, their soul, and their body, that they might be sanctified according to your word in 1 Thessalonians 5, where it says, I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless under the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for doing that. We thank you, Lord God, that are for those that are looking for a financial miracle. I thank you, Lord God, that this different way of looking uh, at finances today and material goods, Lord, will have an impact and it will affect their financial condition. And I thank you, Lord, whatever other needs that people have that are listening today, I thank you that every need is met 
Every question is answered. Every problem is solved in Jesus' mighty name. If you agree with that, say amen. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Now, let's talk about this area of our friendship with finances, or we could say our partnership with prosperity. Everyone, and listen to me, everyone relates to finances and material goods in one way or another. There are no exceptions. It's how we relate or what your relationship is that makes the difference. That's what makes the difference. Everyone relates to finances and material goods in one way or another. It's how you relate or what your relationship is that makes the difference. So as we begin today, I want to ask you some questions. And I'm going to try to be slow about this to give you time to think. Because there might be something as in the answer to the questions that I'm asking you that will help you out. And that's what we want for you today. We want help. Praise God. We're not preaching about finances and material goods because we want some from you. No, that's not the intent at all. We want you to receive everything that has been given to you in Christ Jesus, including every financial need met. Praise God. And the scripture does say in Philippians 4.19, My God supplies all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let me ask you some questions. First of all, how is your relationship with money? Let me ask you another question. How are you and money getting along right now? How are you getting along? Does money like you? Is it attracted to you? Is money working for you? Or are you working for money? Praise God. Are you working for money or is money working for you? Now, obviously, you can tell by these questions, and I hope you're being honest with yourself. If you hear those questions, you don't just let hear me hear me asking the questions, but you're actually internalizing that and answering the questions as I ask them. But Obviously, by the questions themselves, you you know that I believe you should have a good relationship with money. Now, it's also possible to go overboard with that and be too intimate with money. It's like this. We should relate to money like we relate to an employee. If you run a company and you have employees that help you get done what the company was formed for... Uh, you know, it's important that you have good employees and have good relationships with the employees. When you have an employee, it's not good to have a negative relationship, you know, not getting along where they don't even want to serve you at all. They, you know, coming to work for them is a drag. And the only reason they come in is, in is for a paycheck because they really don't care about you, really don't care about the company because they don't like you, right? And that's not the kind of employee that you would want. On the other hand, if you get too intimate with an employee, you know, if you have a love affair, with an employee. That is totally inappropriate. It's even illegal. You know, for, and it's illegal for a reason. It's called sexual harassment, right? That's going overboard. See, employees are to serve in that company and a healthy relationship with an employee where that person is in their place and you're in your place is it's that way for a reason. All right. And that's like how our relationship with money should be. If you have a good, balanced, working relationship with your employee, it's powerful. That employee can help you and bless you and put you over in your company while they're enjoying their employment. And that's a good thing. Amen. It works to everyone's benefit. So here's the tie-in. We need to stop arranging dates with money and instead hire it to do the heavy lifting for us. 
We also need to stop being ashamed of our relationship with money and start showcasing it just as if just as if it's a health, if it's healthy for us to have money working for us again everyone relates to finances and material goods in one way or another it's how you relate or what your relationship is that makes the difference now some christians talk as if they are at odds with money like money's not important or they don't like it or they don't want it you know even though, though they need it right they talk that way that's wrong let money be your uh, food let it be your friend let it agree with you it's kind of like this you know good food right um you know, you like, you like something to taste good, but you also like it to function well on the inside. And food that agrees with you is good food, right? And you want it to agree with your system. You want it to benefit your system. And so you want a healthy relationship with food, <laughs> right? It's the same kind of thing. You want it to work with you and for you, not against you. And you don't want to, you know, you don't want to talk about it or think about it like, well, you really don't need it. Of course you need it. You need food. You need uh, people that you work with and you need money. So let's have a healthy relationship in all of those realms. Are you listening to me? Praise God. We, how, do we, how do we let money agree with us? Well, we do that by having the right attitude toward money and material goods. And that only comes as we understand what the purpose of money is. The purpose of money is to glorify God with. It's to serve God with it. Praise God. It's money on a mission. It's prosperity with a purpose. Praise God. Let me say that again. It's money on a mission. It's prosperity with a purpose. There's a purpose for it. You know why some believers talk and act like they don't have a good relationship with money? It's basically because of this. They think money is about them. It's not about you. It's not about you at all. If we don't get that, our relationship with money will be wrong and we will not have the financial resources that God intends for us to have so we can get our job done on the earth. Praise God. And we're going to see that more in the scriptures as we go along. But you see, money is not about you. God doesn't bless you just you know, you know, with money, you know, just for you to spend on your own, uh, you know, uh, enjoyment and those kinds of things. It's really so that you will be a blessing. Praise God. You can't be blessed if you're, uh, or you can't be a blessing if you are not blessed about, about, blessed first. Now think about this. Money plays an important role in our lives. It really does. Money issues, you know, are the prime source of stress and anxiety and pressure. Praise God. Money controls lives, attitudes, and emotions. See, people are slaves to money. That's a problem. That's a wrong relationship with money. They're driven to make it and to keep it. Now, this doesn't just apply to rich business people, by the way. Some are not driven to make it. They're just driven to keep up with it, you know. Uh, you know, you've probably seen the bumper sticker that says, I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. That's a terrible relationship with money. And that is, I hope you don't have that on your car. <laughs> Praise God. Because, we, you know, it's not about you chasing money. Money's supposed to chase you, my friend. Praise God. Along these lines, you know, we have many other sayings. Sometimes people think they're funny. But in reality, it showcases a bad relationship with money. And that's not good. Amen. We must have proper relationship with money. Our goal in this lesson is to help us make the proper attitude adjustments toward money. Because if you do that, you can get it, 
keep it and steward money in a way that is free of stress, worry, anxiety, and will enhance and bless your life, your family, and the world while you are glorifying God. And you're going to enjoy yourself doing it too, because you'll be flowing in your destiny, in the purpose for which you were created for in, in the beginning. Does that sound good to you? Well, hallelujah. I hope so. Amen. We're going to go, to go to the book of Matthew, and we're going to listen to the words of the Master himself, Jesus Christ, and this is right in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. Praise God. Sermon on the Mount is three chapters, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, and the, the middle chapter is, is dominated by the subject of money. Praise God. And I'm going to start with verse 24 in Matthew Chapter 6, praise God, says this, no man can serve two masters. Amen. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, he didn't say you should not serve God and mammon. He said you cannot serve God and mammon. Praise God. Now, Actually, just a little side note here, the word mammon doesn't just refer to money. It actually was a god in the ancient world which was supposed to rule over finances and people would serve uh, literally this god called mammon and by them doing that, they believed that it was going to give them more finances. Okay, but uh, actually it's speaking of the whole Babylonian money system that's in the world today. And, and let me just say this, that so much of it is fake, quite frankly. We, we use uh, dollar bills in any denomination that, that uh, really are, aren't hardly worth the paper they're printed on, but we they've been assigned a certain value, so we exchange these for the things that we want, but it's backed by nothing, okay? It's backed by nothing, and that's why inflation happens. It's, that's simply an adjustment to the value they place on the dollar, and the dollar is, has been the kingpin for decades for the money systems of the entire world. That is changing, by the way, and I hope you're prepared for the change that's coming up, but we're going to come into a time here when that whole system will be completely different. Praise God. Now, let me get back to just the idea of money in general. I, I want you to settle this in your own heart, my friend, that you serve God and money serves you. Amen. You serve God, money serves you. As a matter of fact, I want you to say this after me and say this out loud right where, we, where you are. Say, I serve God, money serves me. One more time. I serve God, money serves me. See, if you're going to serve money, then your relationship with God is put on the back burner. All right? Everything's in reverse of the way it should be. The way it's supposed to be is you serve God and money serves you in serving God. Hallelujah. Now, money makes a lousy master. Money is a hard taskmaster, but money is a great servant. Praise God. If you get a hold of this concept and you allow money to serve you rather than you serving money, then it's going to be a great servant, and that's what you want. Now, I just read verse 24. Let me read on here. Verse 25, it says this. Therefore, I say unto you, don't take any thought for your life. Don't think about yourself, what you will eat, what you will drink, or yet for your body, what we shall put, what you will put on. Isn't the life more than meat or food? And the body than raiment or clothing? Amen. Behold the fowls of the air, the dumb birds, right? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they are? And the answer to that question is yes. 
<laughs> okay, praise God. I know there might be animal rights activists that might argue with that a little bit, but the reality is mankind is at the top of the food chain when it comes to the creation. Okay, man is in control, not some animal. The animals were put here for us, praise God. It doesn't mean we abuse them. Absolutely not. We don't, we don't abuse any of the creation, but, but that we are greater than the birds of the air. And that's the reality. And what Jesus is saying here is, if I take care of these dumb birds, don't you think I can take care of you? Amen. But let me show you something. One of the main reasons that we are better than the birds of the air is because we do so and we do reap. They don't. We do. Amen. What what are we what are you talking about, Brother Craig? Well, I'm just simply saying this that we direct money. In our sowing and in our reaping, we are directing where money will go. Praise God. Now, we do not allow money to control us or make decisions for us. That's the problem. But we have the capacity to determine where money goes and what it does. And let me just come back to that thought just a moment about, uh, you know, serving money instead of money serving us. The problem with that is if God tells us to do something, we're going to go check our bank account instead of, uh, you know, just telling money, you better get in line. I can't tell you my brother, my sister, how many times God has spoken to me about a particular thing. And I say, but God, that cost, you know, that cost $15,000. I'm kind of making up the figure right now, but I've, he's given me projects that cost a lot of money. And I say, that costs $15. And, and, and God says, well, I've got it. And you know, and, and he's, and you know what he's just told me? If you have the right mindset about it, you, then I, you will understand that you have more money at your disposal than you thought you did. Praise God. In other words, I just discovered I'm $15,000 richer than I thought I was. See, I don't have to go check my bank account to find out if I have the capacity to do what God told me to do. God has given me capacity by the very word which he gave me. When he instructed me to carry out a project or to bless somebody, whatever it is, of course, he's given the, me the ability to be able to do that. He, you know, the first time he told me to give away a thousand dollars to somebody, I didn't have a thousand dollars, but you know, by the time I wrote that check, I did. And that's the good news, praise God. See, if you determine I'm going to obey God and, mo and money is going to serve me, I serve God, money serves me. If that's the way you're thinking, then that's the way you'll live. And you know what? I am certain that if you're born again, that's what you want to, praise God. Amen. Verse 27 uh, says this. I just read verses 25 and 26. Verse 27 says, Which of you by taking a thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Now this is interesting. I, uh, I, I stand five foot seven. But, uh, you know, I have never believed God to make me a professional basketball player. <laughs> I don't qualify, right? Now, could I get taller? Well, I can't do, do it by worrying about it. He didn't say you couldn't get taller. I don't know any reason why I'd need to be taller, but uh, he said you can't add one cubit to your, to your stature by taking thought for it. Amen. How do you take thought? By saying it. So I'm not going to worry about that. Verse 28, and why take ye thought for clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory, the richest man that ever lived, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, isn't he going to clothe you, O you of little faith? Praise God. Now, before I go on, let me just explain something here. Why is it that the lilies of the field are clothed in a way that's better than even the richest guy in the, on earth, simply because of this. You know, the, 
the, the, the, the lilies or any kind of flower is actually clothed from the inside out. When I get up in the morning, I go to the dresser and I put on, you know, I put on a shirt and I put on pants and so forth, but I'm clothed from the outside on. See, I have to take those clothes out of the closet and I have to put them on my body, right? I, but a flower is clothed from the inside out. And that's the way God wants us to live. You see, he's put everything uh, for life and godliness on the inside of us in the new birth. And now we're able to be clothed and receive all of our needs met from the inside out. We don't live hand to mouth. We live mouth to hand. And what we are speaking is what God's word has to say about our condition. Praise God. I am clothed like the lilies of the field from the inside out. Praise. That doesn't mean I don't hang clothes on this body. What it means is, is that I understand what God has given me in Christ Jesus, which includes money and material things, and I speak those into existence the way I want them. Praise God. Let's go on, and we just have a short time here, but verse 30 says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, isn't he going to much more clothe you of your, you of little faith? And then verse 31, Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? Now, make a decision to be free from the care over money forever. Make that decision. It starts with a decision. Doesn't mean you're going to do everything perfect today, but start with that decision that I'm going to be free from the care over money. And then verse 32, after all these things, do the Gentiles or all the nations seek after for your heavenly Father, Father knows what things you have need of before you even ask. Praise God. He, has, he knows. Praise the Lord. He's made provision. That's why he says in verse 33, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now let me just say that Jesus, at the time he spoke this, was saying this to Jews under the old covenant. Today, this applies to us as well. We're to seek the kingdom and God's righteousness. However, it's different. The way we seek it is we seek an understanding of the kingdom that's already been given to us and the righteousness which has already been bestowed upon us. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're not going to take thought. And we're going to stop right there today. And by the way, what we're teaching about uh, partnership with prosperity, friendship with finances, uh, this is one of the CDs that is part of our uh, foundations for prosperity series seven cds many hours of teaching this will bless you if you'd like to receive this just let us know we'll make this available to you we would like to ask for a donation of 35 dollars or more but everything we do is on a donation basis so let me just say this if you just need this material and you would like to have it and you live in the usa we'll get it to you we'll work it out with you because we want you to have these truth, truths firmly planted in your spirit. We're out of time for today. Be blessed in Jesus. And let me just say this. We love you. And let me remind you of this, my friend, that if you are born again, you are God's ambassador. You're his representative on the earth. Praise God. Bye for now.